Hello YouTube, this is Bonnie with Old Soul Mermaid and with yet another unboxing and first impressions. And this one I am very, very excited about. It's been months I've been waiting for this. This has been my, this was my very first um, Kickstarter that I backed uh, last year in the spring. Um, I believe it was originally supposed to come out before uh, Samhain, Halloween, but there were problems with printing, and uh, but that's okay because I'm so excited about this. This is The Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris, and I just got it this afternoon, and normally I film in the bright Texas sunshine in my sewing room because the light is the best there but I decided for a, uh, today was a rainy day not great light and I thought because of the essence of this deck I thought a little ambiance would be called for so I did take it out of it just came in this paper package but it came heavily sealed and this is like heavily heavily padded packaging. So we are going to go right into it and try to, uh, oh, I thought it was going to be a little bit harder getting this out, but it's not. So the Relative Tarot, oh, and it looks like it's in plastic too. I know some people have gotten theirs already and there has been some walkthroughs of this deck, but I'm going to do mine. Comes in a beautiful box. Now this is um, a tarot deck, a full tarot deck, and also an 80 card uh, oracle deck. And I believe they're, they're probably gonna be side by side. I'm looking at the box. Looks like I got a couple of little dings right here, but... I don't think it's anything I can't live with. I mean, I have no choice, <laughs> basically. Oh yeah, that got smashed a little bit in this corner. But it is a beautiful box. The Relative Tarot um, includes 80 cards, Spirit Oracle uh, from the studio of Carrie Paris with 60 page instructional booklet by Tina Hart and Carrie Paris. So one of the reasons why this deck appealed to me and I had I, I, it was at the time when I discovered Kickstarter was because of the subject matter ancestry ancestor healing and with this deck oh my goodness um you get a five class five classes of instructions on how to use the deck um, working with Ancestor Energy. I believe a couple of the classes are going to be taught by Carrie Paris, or maybe three of them. And then I believe one is going to be taught by Mary Kay Greer. And James Wells is going to do one. So, even with all the padding, I'm kind of a stickler for this. My, my box did come quite a bit dinged up. I know it was coming directly from China, so it had to come a long way. And I'm surprised, can you see that right there? Um, I'm a little bit disappointed about that right off the bat. But let's look at the cards. Well, let's look at the back of the box. The unique aim of the Relative Tarot is to help you discover your true potential by connecting with your beloved ancestors. This spirited set includes a tarot deck that's rich in vintage photographs overlaid with familiar tarot imagery, as well as an additional spirit card oracle that offers wisdom from the spirit realm and instructions on how to navigate life's lessons by calculating your tarot blueprint, birth and annual cards. So let's open it up. It's a magnetic closure. It's a coffee brown, if you can't tell. Oh, wow. Okay, this is the uh, reading cloth. Let's see the cherubs. Um, I believe this is going to be a 
a, a silky type of cloth. I'm trying to look and see where I can open that. Y'all are opening this with me and going through it with me. Move the deck aside. I'm gonna move my candle away so I don't set anything on fire. So yes, there's printing only on one side, but it is beautiful. It's got the suits, swans, cups, swords, pentacles, um, and there's cherubs surrounding it. Very beautiful, very silky. Um, totally in my wheelhouse. <laughs> I love this sort of stuff. Okay, we're going to put that off to the side and go back to the box. Now, it comes with a little instructional booklet for the Diligent Diviner by Tina Hart and Carrie Paris. And let's, there's a dedication. Um, she talks about the deck and the campaign, a preface, a welcome. Uh, who am I? What have I come here to do? How do I find my soul's truth? Your tarot blueprint, birth annual and significator cards. I I think she's using a formula set forth by Mary Kay Greer, locating your personal numbers in the relative tarot. Let's do the math. Building a tarot blueprint takes practice. Locating and calculating as many birthdays from your ancestral line and personal life will eventually make creating blueprints become second nature. And single birth cards. Oh wow, it, go, it, it goes through a lot of um, things. The minor arcana, body, heart, mind, and spirit. So yes, uh, more uh, talks about shadow cards, more about hidden shadow cards, calculating annual cards. Um, it goes through the court cards, determining the significator. Significator correspondences, the nine blueprints, pattern breakers, imprints, and mentors. This is like a very unique deck and that's why I backed it. It's, it's what I've been crying for and it's something I really wanna learn how to delve into. Um, I have a lot of shadow work to do with my ancestry, particularly on one side, my paternal side, the uh, Mormon side, the Swedish side. Um, I'm a, I, uh, I have a long history steeped in Mormonism, polygamy, and all that kind of wonderful stuff that goes with that and uh, religious trauma. So this is, I'm hoping, and I'm, oh, here it goes a little bit about the spirit oracle. It doesn't really go into who the pictures are. I think many of them are theatrical portraits with the, with the, okay, here we go. Can you see? The top of the box, walking, I am listening to a deeper way. Suddenly all my ancestors are behind me. Be still, they say, watch and listen. You are the result of, of the love of thousands. And that's by Lin, a quote by Linda Hogan. So this doesn't really go into um, the meanings but I of each card, but I believe there's a PDF coming that will do just that. All right, so what do we do first? I guess the tarot deck. I'm gonna get. Ooh. Okay, one thing off the bat, I notice that this is 
the cards are set in really tight and the, the strings, the ribbons in here are quite short. Um, my card, the top card came a little bit bent. It got a little chipped. But we're gonna put the box away. And let's go through as quickly as we can. <laughs> A lot of my videos are not quick and let me see get in a little bit closer see if I can get in just a little bit closer all right is that close enough all right they are edged in a beautiful chocolate covered edging with just a bit of sparkle I don't know if that's coming up but it has, it's like little flecks, little specks, nothing ostentatious. The cardstock is very good cardstock. Um, smooth matte finish. I would say this is about regular uh, tarot card size, maybe a tad bit bigger than maybe a regular RWS card, maybe a tad bit, but um, not much. And there's a lot of numbers here, I think, for the work purpose of the deck. So this is the Magician, and, uh, ooh, did I not get a Fool? Maybe the Fool's at the end? I don't know, I know there's a Fool card, because I've seen it. All right, well, let's go through this. Uh, the Magician. And I love how it very cleverly has some symbology from the RWS um, in the background. So this is a collage deck, as many of you know. Ooh, High Priestess. Is this Theta Barra? Silent Actress? Very interesting. Oh! So we get two um, choices of a uh, high priestess. So kind of the more mystical one and kind of the more, you know, we get the nun with the, with the traditional, um, well, they both have the pillars, the traditional pillars and the crescent moon at the feet. So it's nice to have choices. The empress. Very cool. The Emperor is Tsar Nicholas II, the last Tsar of Russia, uh, who was Tsar during uh, the World War I conflict. He and his family were brutally massacred in, uh, in Russia at, what was it, right before the end of the war, I think, uh, 1917. I think, yeah. So if you're interested in Russian history, read about that. A very interesting character. Uh, looks a lot like his cousin at the time, who was king of England at the same time, uh, King George V. Yes, their mothers were sisters. The Hierophant. And this one's got a pop of color. Mostly this is subdued, but it's nice. Let's see if there's more pops of color. The lovers. Oh, we've got two. Three lovers. Okay. All right. So we've got kind of like um, an Eve and Eve. An Adam and Adam. And Adam and Eve, very cool, very cool. Everybody's represented. The chariot, <laughs> very interesting. Justice, strength. Very traditional with the lion. 
the Hermit, and I hope you are getting these. Do I need to get in just a little bit closer? The Hermit, the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, and you get a choice of the Wheel of Fortune. I think I'm leaning towards the gentleman here, but I don't know. It's nice if you want to change up the flavor of your deck. You've got choices. Oh, we've got just justice and strength again. Okay, I see. It depends on how you want to order your deck. You've got choices. So they're the exact same pictures, just with di different numbering. So that's very cool. The Hanged Man. Hmm. That looks a lot like Harry Houdini to me. I don't know, maybe the PDF that comes out will tell us who some of the, if there's famous people depicted who they are, but that, that does look like Harry Houdini in the chains. Death. Oh, and we get two choices for death. I don't know which one I like better. I think this one's more traditional maybe, but the guy in the mask and the black cloak is very cool. Oh goodness, it's gonna be hard to pick. Temperance. Devil. Tower. It's a very cool tower. Is this, could this be? Okay, this is depicting a fire. No doubt a famous fire. Maybe the, um, the garment shirt factory fire in New York, or it maybe it's depicting the San Francisco earthquake. Not quite sure, I would like to know. The star. Oh, and it looks like we've got our choice of moon cards as well. She looks very, uh, <laughs> very happy and carefree. And this one takes a little more serious tone. I don't know. I think I'm leaning towards this. I just love her um, beautiful profile in the moon. But again, you can always change it up. Sun card. No creepy babies, but it looks like they're experiencing happy times. Judgment. Again, traditional imagery. Drawn in. The universe. Oh, and the world. So you could either call it the universe or the world. I don't know which one I want. I, I'm thinking this is uh, Nijinsky, the famous Russian dancer. But I love her beautiful arabesque right here. Oh, choices, choices. Okay, here is my fool card, and he was out of order, so um, I'm very happy. <laughs> I was gonna go, oh no, I don't have a fool. But here is the uh, dog. These have these cards have a very whimsical and witty nature to them, the way they are done, and I love it. I love collage art, and I love collage art decks. I'm drawn to them. So I know a lot of people aren't, but when they're done well, you just can't beat them. Ace of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. Very traditional. Three of Pentacles. This one kind of looks more like a three of crowd. <laughs> the expression on her face. Four of Pentacles. Beautiful. Beautiful girl. Five of Pentacles. Mm, sweet little face. The Six of Pentacles. Very much is a theatrical picture, I believe. 
Well, she looks like she's in costume for a production. Maybe all over twist, I don't know. Seven of Pentacles. He looks like he's Eastern European. This gentleman. Eight of Pentacles. There are pops of colors amidst, you know, the muted coloring, so that's very nice. The Nine of Pentacles, she's beautiful. Again, traditional imagery. Ten of Wands. Oh, yes, she did. Carrie Paris did mention that we'll be getting a corrected Ten of Pentacles card because this is obviously Pentacles, but it's labeled the Ten of Wands. So we did get an update about that. King of Pentacles. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if this is Sitting Bull or somebody else. Oh, I have to research that. Harriet Tubman, Queen of Pentacles. That's awesome. Knight of Pentacles, Civil War Union soldier. I don't from the mustache and the hair, I'd say that maybe that's an early picture of Custer, but maybe not. You know, a lot of men had those kind of must mustachios at that time. Nine of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles. Ace of Swords. Now, I love the aces. They are so beautiful. This is very, very well put together. Two of Swords. <laughs> Three of Swords. So you've got the traditional imagery there depicted, but you've also got some other things going on here. My goodness, he's in a pickle, isn't he? Going through some rough times. Four of Swords. Three swords up here, fourth resting at the feet. Five of swords. Oh, I love this six of swords. She is, and this is traditional imagery, but I just love, she's going off to something better and it looks like she's heading off into a better position, a position of promise. She's young. I love this. If you can pick up the starry background, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. Seven of Swords. Don't, uh, I wanna say that's the Russian dancer Nijinsky again, but I don't know. Could be wrong. It just looks like a pose or maybe it's an actor. Maybe it's Lionel Barrymore or something, but it looks very familiar. Oh, I love this Eight of Swords. Beautiful. Nine of Swords. Yes, sister, let it all out. She's waking up from a nightmare, or she's just screaming her head off, letting it all out, everything that's plaguing her. Let the energy off that card. Oh my. Oh my gosh, I love this, the Ten of Swords. So, traditional imagery, but kind of looks more like he's going in for acupuncture. <laughs> Love it, love it. The King of Swords. He's gotta be somebody famous. I wish I knew. Oh, the Queen of Swords. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the Empress Frederick, uh, Queen Victoria's daughter. 
and the mother of the detested Kaiser Wilhelm um, of Prussia at the time. Before it was Germany, it was Prussia. And, uh, oh yes, he was quite the madman, narcissist, tremendous ego. He was a cousin of Tsar Nicholas and King George V, all cousins at war during World War uh, I. And she's the, the mother of Kaiser Wilhelm, Helm, daughter of uh, Queen Victoria. I believe that's who it is, the Empress Frederick or Vicky to her family. Uh, quite an interesting life if you can read a book about her. Very, very interesting. The Knight of Swords. Oh, wow. Page of Swords. Young theatrical or vaudevillian performer, apprentice, already, gosh, looks like he's mastering his craft, doesn't it? So these are kind of in reverse order, the knights and the, yeah. Ace of Wands, again, the beautiful hand. Lots of little stars and stardust in the background. The Two of Wands, wow. If only we could have a crystal ball to tell us, you know, if our new ventures are gonna work out for us, if our ideas are gonna come into fruition only. Well, I guess the tarot is kind of that crystal ball in a way. It can be. Three of Wands, obviously a gentleman of Asian descent. Four of Wands. It looks like we're getting a little more um, diverse in the uh, in the minors. Beautiful. Five of Wands. <laughs> Competition, kind of strife. They're all not listening to each other. It's hilarious. I'm sure this was a theatrical uh, portrait at the time. It looks like it's a seen in a play. Very clever. Six of Wands. You know, this was somebody's, somebody's ancestor. Very thought-provoking. I hope, you know, people who have the African-American ancestry won't I don't know, I can't even begin to judge, but what I see here, you know, that's their ancestry, you know, and it's something to be proud of that they came through it and have achieved wonderful things from this horrible beginning in our country. And um, I hope they won't take offense. I think Carrie Paris has done a good job of trying to be very inclusive and um, sympathetic in her um, depictions. I think it's a beautiful picture. Seven of Wands. This is funny. The Eight of Wands. Looks like almost like he's writing a magic carpet. The Nine of Wands. Okay, so it looks like we get two depictions for, two choices for the Ten of Wands. This one looks more traditional. Carrying the wand, she's got them forward and she's carrying them on her back, basically. This is a little bit more whimsical, depending on what you prefer. I like both. Oh, geez, it's going to be hard to pick. <laughs> the King of Wands. Oh, yes. Look at the smile on his face. Quite confident. 
This Queen of Wands is quite beautiful and probably quite a scandalous uh, photograph for the time, but you know, theatrical performers got away with uh, certain things that normal society couldn't at, the, at this time, Victorian, Edwardian, Knight of Wands, Page of Wands. I'm sure she, this person was probably a well-known performer. Uh, I don't think, at first I thought maybe Rosalind Russell, but I'm not sure. Probably admired for her small waist and her legs. Ace of Cups, beautiful. Beautiful. Two of Cups, oh, here we go. Another choice for the Two of Cups. Get the rather austere ladies. And you get the couple, the more normal depiction. They look like they're having a grand old time. I love how they, they've got the traditional symbolism in here. But you get your choice. It's, I love all of them. Okay, so here's another, um, these are famous people. Again, this gentleman in the middle is a young Tsar Nicholas II. And this is his brother-in-law. Uh, Ernst go, went by Ernie, the Duke of Hesse, so the brother of his wife, Alexandra, the most hated woman in Russia she became. I'm not sure who the gentleman is on the bottom, but I know these two on the top. Three of Cups. I think this is beautiful. Instead of the normal depiction of uh, females partying, you know, they're, I guess they're partying in their own way. <laughs> they're very proper. We've got the book and they're the uh, epitome of a, of a proper Victorian, a proper Victorian young women. Four of Cups. I love the way they've got um, inserted the, the traditional RWS in there. Oh, two five of cups, one male, one female, whichever one you prefer. Oh gosh, it's going to be so hard to choose. I love the hole in his fisherman's sweater. Both are impactful. Oh my gosh. Sweet, sweet, sweet as can be. Six of Cups. Seven of Cups. I like how they have him blindfolded and he must choose. What will he choose? The Eight of Cups. I like this. You know she's wearing one of those horrible, horrible corsets because she looks, you know, normal, voluptuous, and there's no way a woman with those curves would have that small waist naturally. I just find the whole corset thing fascinating. Oh, what a time, what a time. Nine of Cups, beautiful. Oh, oh, Ten of Cups. Oh my goodness. See, Carrie Paris, hats off to the lady for trying to be as inclusive as she can. It's hard to choose, you know, these are both wonderful pictures. King of Cups. Queen of Cups. She looks a little bit dreamy there. Knight of Cups. Looks like a three musketeer, doesn't he? Maybe he's playing one on the stage. Don't know. Page of Cups. Oh! Two choices for the Page of Cups. Oh my goodness. 
Got the traditional fish. Like which one do you prefer? I think I just switch them out. And oh, there's an additional wish card, which is just beautiful. I think this is probably like the background for a lot of the cards. You know, and then the images were inserted in there because the stars and the coloring, but it's beautiful. All right, so that was the tarot deck. So we'll quickly, quickly go through the, um, the uh, Oracle deck. Now, if I'm not mistaken, oh, this card got chipped a little bit. I wonder if I could get it, find a brown Sharpie and maybe take care of that. Okay, so I believe at the time of the Kickstarter, um, there was a, a Facebook group that people could uh, submit photos of their own family ancestry, and a lot of those were inserted to make this deck, which I think is totally cool. I got into the Kickstarter too late to participate in that, but I love this image. It's like, yes. Another depiction of our um, African American, I believe. He could be European too. Don't know. Academic. Addiction. Ancestry. This card is kind of haunting to me. Look, do you see the little boy's tummy? Do you see how thin his legs are and his little distended tummy? That tells me this kid was hungry or he's got a bad case of worms. Oh, it breaks my heart. Life was very hard. I, it's a wonder how anybody lived, you know, with all the diseases, the hardships, the poor working conditions. People often had to work till they dropped dead to, for survival. So hats off to our ancestors. Artistry. Balancing act. I'll try to shut up because um, there's 80 cards here. <laughs> Blessing, Bohemian, Bond, Brazenness, Camouflage, Chance, Chivalry, Very distinguished young gent. Civil servant. Comedy tragedy. Communication. Competition. Conflict. Conscientious sweet little girl. <laughs> Chicken. Coward. Defense. Delusion. Dictatorship. Disconnect. Drama, drama queen, <laughs> elegance, entertainment, exploration, forget me nots, frame of reference. Guardian, Harvest, I apologize, I think 
I'm in a closed room, but I think my husband is blasting a Rush video right now because the drummer ju just was announced that the drummer died of brain cancer today. So my husband's a big Rush fan. Heating. Hearth and Home. <laughs> Horse's ass. Hospitality, humor, imitation, inheritance, oh, sweet innocence, intuition, invitation. Kindred, labor, leisure, Aww. loyalty, martyrdom, mischief, looks like a little paper boy. Newlyweds, nonconformist. Look at those tattoos. At first, I thought she was wearing a lace outfit, but they are tattoos. So I gather she must have been traveling with a traveling act as the tattooed lady, as a you know, kind of a circus freak. The way for her to earn a living. And it's quite sad because there were very few options for women at the time. Optimism. Opportunity. <laughs> she doesn't like what's in the cards for her. Oracle. Organ grinder. Panache, or panache, however, uh, whatever part of the country you're from, you'll pronounce it differently. Partnership, pillar, popularity, oh, this is beautiful, radiance, reflection, Regimen, religion, this is kind of, will be a trigger card for me, rescue, I would say Red Cross at the time of the First World War would be my guess, rite of passage, Ritual, seance, which are spiritualism, seances were big at this time. Servitude, so many people worked in service, so many of our ancestors worked in service. Siblings. Silver Spoon, Snake Charmer, Solidarity, Sorceress, Spirit, Stature, Theatrics, Thin Ice, Tribe, I know using 
this word for some tribe is a trigger word for some. I don't know why she didn't use family, maybe, or I don't know. I mean, I'm not bothered by it, but some people with from a different background could be. Vanity. Vigor. Aw. Visionary. I love that she put a young little girl here as a visionary. You know, often, um, you know, they say the veil is very thin for children. At, you know, when they're very young. And they can often see things that we can't. Always pay attention when a child says something kind of profound. Wise guy. And that is the last of the Oracle cards. Now I will say, um, let's see how they shuffle very nicely. I'm not a riffle shuffler, as you know. But these are very smooth, smooth matte. Uh, let's just try. You know, I can barely, my hands are so small, I can barely reach the ends of the cards. So if you're a riffle shuffler and you're practiced at it, you will have an easy time. I'm keeping my... Uh, the tarot deck in order because I don't know what cards I'm going to use, but I don't know if it's picking up. You can pick up some of the little, I don't know if it's glitter, speckles, a little bit of stardust, I would say, on, on the decks. So, I don't think this is available yet on her website. I'm not sure if she's going to um, have it available on her website. If if I find out any information, I will put it down in the box below. Uh, I this is a this is a hit for me, and I I cannot wait to work with it with the classes. Um, I think the feelings I'm getting right off the bat is it's going to help me deal with some of my ancestral issues and uh, shadow shadows. Uh, I will let you know after I've taken the classes and we will go back to the deck and I will let you know how it works. I am quite happy with the deck itself. Uh, uh, Carrie Paris, I think she was very conscious to be inclusive, especially, you know, because it is an ancestor deck to be inclusive. Uh, to, so that um, people's people from different backgrounds can have the experience of having their ancestry represented. Uh, even though a lot of these people may, you know, look white, um, some of them are Eastern European, and an Eastern European's experience is different from a Western European. Um, the black experience, uh, the African American experience is, is different from the Asian experience. Uh, it, it's, I thought she did, you know, as well as can be expected, a great job of representing, but let me know in the comments. Um, I'm a new channel, so I would love to hear from you. If you got any value from this, subscribe, hit like. And I would love to hear in the comments below, what do you think of the deck? Did you get it? Um, have you gone through with it? Have you started working with it yourself? And what do you think um, about representation? It's, uh, you know, it's kind of a tricky thing. I often think that women, everybody wants to be represented in, in a tarot deck that they buy. And I... Uh, I can sympathize with with 
some people of different races and cultures saying that they're not represented well when they when they buy a tarot deck uh, I think creators are trying to be more conscious of that uh, but there's a tricky line I believe because so many of my background if I were an artist a writer or a tarot deck creator my background I couldn't really write about the African-American experience or the Asian experience. It's not my wheelhouse. You know, I could do all the research I can if if I were an academic or, but it's not quite the same as experiencing it, hearing the stories from your ancestors, from experiencing um, racism and uh, the things of that nature. Uh, I do have a Mexican mother. I am half Mexican. She's a first generation to this country, but I have a Swedish father. So um, I did see my mom experience some racism um, being a Mexican woman. Uh, it was a different, a different dynamic, quite interesting in my family. My sister and I were lighter skinned, looked more like my father's side of the family, whereas my uh, three brothers were Latino looking, darker skin, olive skin, dark hair, dark eyes. And um, so it, we had two cultures literally in, in my house, you know, I've got the Swedish and, and the Mexican. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let me know what you think. I really want to know what you think about this deck. I'm sorry if it's not going to be available. That I did a video of this deck. Um, but I thought it might be of interest. I couldn't wait. I was excited to get it. It's been months. I've been waiting for it. The only disappointment I, I have is that I'm so sad and I'm so persnickety. And you can tell me that I'm persnickety. But it's like the dings and there's a dent right there and then going to the back of the box it's smushed here and here and another ding here and I'm kind of not very happy about that because I like to keep my boxes nice I send things back to Amazon if they aren't perfect but it's a beautiful box, beautiful production, and that's why I wanted it to be perfect. So, okay, this video is long enough. Uh, let me know what you think, and um, I hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful evening. It is now, oh gosh, it's probably close to 11 o'clock at night, my time, Central Standard Time. So, all right, good night. <laughs>